The Detroit Tigers have won four of their last five games and start off a five-game set against the Twins with a win today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked on Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Tuesday, May 31st, 2022, already almost in June. Time flying by. Thanks for making Locked on Tigers your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, and that is, of course, including the YouTube We've seen a lot of a uh, lot of lot of continued growth all around on, on all platforms, but on YouTube as well. So I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Okay, we are back. The Tigers are rolling. We don't know how much longer that's gonna last, but we we don't we don't talk about that. We're we're just gonna talk about the fact that we're enjoying life right now. They've won four of five. Started off the Minnesota Twin series with a win on a beautiful Memorial Day. Hopefully you uh, you had a nice Memorial Day. Uh, Tigers did the uh, wrote names of fallen military members on their hats. Uh, super cool thing and a nice little tribute there. So good Memorial Day. Got, uh, got, it was a beautiful day outside. Tigers got a win. Can't ask for too much better than that. And they also took a series from Cleveland, which is something that, my goodness, like what? a year and a half ago it might still be was just like foreign was a foreign concept we never won series against cleveland that's just not how it was and back in the like early 2010s and and late 2000s it was a guarantee to win in cleveland then the mid 2010s happened the osmus era etc happened and that quickly turned into it is a guaranteed loss. And then we had, I, I want to say it's the third or fourth longest stretch uh, losing to a single team that like any opponent has had in baseball history or something ridiculous. We lost like 20 or whatever. Cleveland's been rough the last six or seven years. Cleveland's been a tough get. So anytime, don't care how good we are, how bad we are, don't care how good they are, how bad they are, don't care where it's played. I am going to be thrilled over series wins against the Cleveland Guardians. That's just how it's going to be because it ain't, and it ain't always been that easy, right? So we're going to talk about the rest of the Cleveland game and then the uh, the start to the Twins game. No episode yesterday. Holiday uh, was out for, uh, for, for the long weekend. So um, hopefully no one's too mad at me for no episode yesterday. But we're here today. We're recapping three games as we usually do on uh, on the first episode of a week anyway. So all good. Okay, the offense still we're going to talk a lot more generally because we have a lot of games to go over in uh, and we have some roster moves to go over. Oh, it's a big show. It's a really big show. And I think we're going to start with the fact that the offense continues to be brutal. And we talk about it every game. Every game we do a game recap. The first segment is almost entirely about the offense. It's almost entirely negative. It is consistently negative. And it was better against Minnesota for one game. It was better against Minnesota. Against Cleveland, it was not better. We took, we took what, two of three, right? Yeah, we took two of three from Cleveland. We talked about the Miggy walk-off on Friday's show. And then we lose 8 to 1 on Saturday. Friday's rained out. We lose 8 to 1 on Saturday. And then we lose two, or we win rather 2 to 1 on Sunday. So we split 1 and 1 and get outscored 9 to 3. But we split 1 of 1. We'll take it, but ugly, right? Ugly. And Chris Fetter deserves all the credit in the world. All these pitchers deserve all the credit in the world. There's They're the guys that are going out there on the bump every day. The pitching has been stellar. And I think it's probably safe to say 
that even though the record has been underwhelming and the team's performance has been underwhelming and, and people are upset and they're rightfully upset that it could be even worse, which sounds ridiculous coming out of my mouth, but it is it is true. It could be even worse. The pitching could be not great either. The offense has been the worst in baseball. That's not an overreaction. That's not me dream, being dramatic, as I tend to be sometimes. That is objectively true. The average runs they're scoring a game, the runs they've scored on the season, the fact that we, we put up seven on, on Monday, and that was the first time we had even put up seven in over a month or something ridiculous like that. Castellani said something like that. Crazy. Embarrassing. Crazy. Fill in the blank. A lot of different adjectives could be used there. So while it's great to end on a good offensive outburst, right? We're ending, we're ending on, on solid seven runs. Great, great day. Great day at the office. Um, I, I'm taking it with a grain of salt because the seven runs is most definitely the outlier here. And I'm very tired of being, oh, it looks like it's turning around guy. I'm very tired of being, oh, it's turning around guy. Everybody look, the offense is starting to wake up. And then the next three games, they score two runs. And I'm like, all right, just kidding, everyone. And they score five. I'm like, oh, watch out. And then they get, you know, one run in the next two games. It's just a vicious cycle that I don't really want to get my hopes up and get let down again. So I'm not going to to say anything like that what i will say is that the key to the fact to the fact the key to us scoring those seven runs was runners in scoring position and the production we had with runners in scoring position i believe we hit 500 with the runners in scoring position in this one that's 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 astronomical to anything we've come close to really all season. That's been the big Achilles heel. I mean, even in the Cleveland series, even in the game, was it Saturday that Shane Bieber started against us? We had 11 base runners and one run. 11 base runners, one single run. Also, 11 base runners, one extra base hit. The key to scoring runs, this is mind-boggling. I know this is groundbreaking stuff. No one has ever said this before. Here's a secret. It's extra base hits, and it's hitting with runners in scoring position. I know. I know. I just completely changed your outlook on the game of baseball, but that is, that, that's, that's how it works. On Saturday, Harold Castro had one double, and oddly enough, get this, he also had the only RBI. Mind-boggling stuff. So you need extra base hits. You need to get under the ball. And you also need to hit with runners in scoring position. Two things that the Tigers have done essentially none of up to this point in the season. S Sunday, Monday being the outlier to that. So we end on a high note. Great news. Phenomenal news. We will always take ending on a high note. Jonathan Scope has been hitting very, very well lately. Even before Monday, he had been taking big strides in the right direction, but capped off by, uh, by, by Monday going three for five, a home run away from the cycle. His OPS is now up to 540. And I know it's kind of ridiculous to go, okay, well, like it's, you know, he's a 540 OPS. That's not anything incredible, but... When, when you realize that it was in like the 380s, whatever, you know, two, what, three weeks ago? Probably the end of April. It was probably in the 300s at the end of April. But, I mean, it was in the 400s in the beginning of May, up until mid-May. So he, he's been really hitting the ball well the last couple of weeks. Also had some bad luck. He, he really has his hard hit rate solid, especially in the month of May as well. Um, but just a, a lot of a lot of bad luck mixed with a really low, bad and and scuffled out of the gate big time. Uh, but we're here now, and that's all we can focus on. And he has been really, really good lately. Javi Baez continues to struggle. Did get a hit in this one, but goes one for five with a strikeout. 
the thing with Javi, and it, again, this is not a secret, but we do need to talk about it. The inability to hit a low and away slider. I mean, you just throw three straight sliders low and away, and there's the Javi Baez at bat. It's uh, it's it's good morning, good afternoon, and good night, and that is a problem. That's that's not something that that we can continue, uh, especially not hitting him like two and three as he has all year. He's got a 538 OPS. Slugging 302, OBP of 236, and the average is now officially below 200. The thing with Javi, A, the defense is incredible, continues to be incredible. But I think it's important to remember that this isn't a new thing. I talked about this with Chris as well. This isn't a new thing. Like, he has always been a free swinger. He's always been an aggressive swinger, I should say. And he has always swung at breaking balls low and away and he's been playing baseball for quite a long time now so my thing is even though it it looks really bad and it does look bad and it's incredibly frustrating and I know for a fact that he's frustrated as hell too he will come around he has always been this aggressive and that has always been a pitch that everybody has kind of known that he has the, the the ability to bite on. And yet, his OPS in his career is not 538. You get what I'm saying? It's going to be frustrating at times. He's going to go through cold streaks. He's going to go through slumps. But he's, he's not going to hit sub 200 with a 300 slugging percentage all year. It's not going to happen. So... You have that. I I think he will go. I'm not saying he's going to be an MVP candidate or that he's going to hit like he did with the Mets for a full season ever, but he's certainly going to be better than this at some point. It's got to turn around. It has to because nothing that's happening to him, nothing he's seeing is new. It's got to turn around eventually. Jamer, another person that, that got off to a cold start, kind of been up and down as of lately. His OPS is almost back up to 600. Had the big home run this weekend as well. I believe he now leads the team in home runs with a whopping five. So that's always impressive. Willie Castro continues to hit. And, you know, he went through a big slump there. He went through a big slump. He was hitting a lot, and then he wasn't hitting at all. He went through like a one for 20-something stretch. And then this past weekend just started hitting again. Uh, Two hits on Monday. They were bad bippy kind of hits but i don't really care it's still more than a lot of other people on the team are doing if you are, are a willy hater and and want him to go get demoted and whatever i wouldn't hold my breath if i were you because at the end of the day this whole offense is like 500 and 400 ops's and willie castro is at least putting the ball in play relatively consistently and if it's luck it's luck i don't care let's use all the luck we can get but better better that than nothing so i i wouldn't hold my breath if i was a, if i was a big willy hater on on seeing him get sent down or anything then Derek hill the big story as well on monday going yard almost went yard twice but did go yard uh there earlier in the game look i Derek, I, I really like the new batting stance for starters. He had a single up the middle too. I uh, I really like the new batting stance. I I don't know what the future holds for Derek Hill and, and where his role will fit in with the future of this team, uh, but he's provided some decent defense as t- at times. He's also surprised. Jeez, I can't speak. He's also provided some subpar defense at times, but he's an athlete. He's probably the best athlete on the team. The dude is unreal. And he's got that on the base paths. He, he'll always have that. He has got he can utilize it in center field when it's all coming together. You got an athlete out there. And if he's hitting, he's dangerous. So it's nice to see him get a little hot there. And then Torkelson had a decent weekend, capitalized by a big day on Monday as well. I know the one hit where I probably wasn't really a hit. I'm not sure you really are giving Torque a hit there if that's on a road park. But, you know, home scoring. We'll take it, baby. Uh, had an extra base hit too. Three hit game. Three 
hits, two runs, one RBI, one strikeout. His OPS is up to 630. The 630 on base plus slugging. We will, we, again, it's really sad when these are numbers. You're like, oh, look, who's like, this is a big accomplishment. Shows you where the state of the defense is. Uh, Hitting Harold also continuing to rake this weekend. Uh, did not hit anything on Monday as the DH and leadoff hitter, but still had a nice series against Cleveland. So we'll see how he's utilized. I think you kind of have to put Harold in the lineup every day. Um, it's really hard to justify not putting him out there every single day. I don't care the position. I don't care where he slates in defensively or if you want to put him at DH on Miggy days off. I don't care. But it's really hard to be to just consistently keep him out of the lineup. There's your offense. Turning a corner, I'm not the person that's going to say if we're turning a corner or not. It's not going to be me. You're going to have to find somebody else. But nice win on Monday. Good enough win. Got just enough offense on uh, on Sunday. And uh, hopefully, we won four of our last five. Let's keep the ship going. Got two against Minnesota tomorrow, by the way. Okay, let's get into the pitching from the weekend. First, though, got to tell you about Bet Online. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. Great game seven, by the way. Oh, peak NBA basketball right there. Major League Baseball scores. Should Jimmy have shot that? You guys think Jimmy should have shot that? I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think that's your best player. He was open. I know you had a timeout and it was in transition. But with less than 15 seconds left, I, I think if your best player gets open, get, you got to pull a trick. You got to let it fly. So I, I think so. But if you think differently, I'd, 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 love to, I'd love to hear the logic as to as to know. You know, hindsight's 2020, But in my eyes, you got to let that baby rip. But online continues to cover the NBA postseason, the NBA finals. We've got a great one slated up. Uh, it's your continued source for all your sports wagering information, live betting, playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn about the trends and the action. Bet online where the game starts. All right, everybody. We are back here for segment two. I am way over time. Holy cow. Way, way over time here at segment two. Thanks for making a lot of time, your first listen every day. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with analysis from all of our local experts taking fans through a season like Northern Network. It's also free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like us, including YouTube. Okay, pitching this weekend outside of Saturday was stellar. And Saturday was kind of an implosion all around. Every single person who took the bump on Saturday gave up a run. So at least one. So not 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 great pitching performance there. That was Alex Fiedo day. Alex Fiedo specifically, I thought was pretty solid. However, six innings, five hits, two runs, two walks, two Ks. That will be a quality start for Alex Fiedo. And look, a, a few things. First off, we've said it a lot this season. I really don't want to keep saying it, but it rains true pretty much always. I know we gave up eight, but we scored one. Just just bad all around. And and I know Fido gave up two, and that's more than we scored, but you should probably expect your offense to score more than one run with a rookie on the bump in like what his fifth, fourth, fifth major league start. Need 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 some more from the offense there. Uh and the bullpen ended up, like I said, just imploding. So it ended up not even mattering really all around. Um, because nine is even a tall task, even for a good offense. But just yeah, not my point is this isn't on Fiedo. Not that anyone thinks it is. I, I find that hard to believe, but I was pretty impressed. I continue to be impressed. I should say with, with Alex Fiedo. It's fascinating because he has had this crazy career arc that, that I am fascinated with. It, it's remarkable to me. The, the grind with Tommy John coming out being the ace of one of the best college rotations we've ever seen, the ups and downs of his minor league career before Tommy John coming back. Most people just kind of agreeing that he was a bullpen piece going forward with a two-pitch mix. 
showing that his slider has great movement and, and it has great potential. And now, in like I said, in literally, what, four starts, five starts at the major league level, I think everybody is like, yeah, we should rock with Fiedo as a starter until proven otherwise. And that that's so awesome. So I, I just want to give him his flowers because that's a that's he's had a lot to deal with in his professional career. And to come out on the other side being a starter and and pitch going six innings quality starts is 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 remarkable, to be honest with you. So only five whiffs in this one. We've seen Fiedo have some starts where the whiffs are really low, and then some where he hits like 17 and is, you know, one of the highest non scooble starts of anyone in the rotation all year. So this one, low on the whiffs. The, the slider in this one is always good. The pitch mix, 47, 30, and 17, respectfully, respectively, that's the word. <laughs> respectfully uh four seam fastball slider and change up uh where the where how many of each pitch he threw there um i mean look it, it was uh it was a pitch to contact day he gave up some hard contact absolutely um but for the most part you know pitching in comerica kept the ball in the yard that that's really what it comes down to when you're pitching at home for this team and that's something that i love that we can provide our young pitching for as much as everybody, you know, is always anytime there's a fly out to the warning track uh, for one of our hitters, it's oh, Comerica's terrible. They need need to move the fence in, but you know, uh, the the value that that we provide our pitching staff is is unbelievable, and especially those young pitchers uh, being able to keep the ball in the yards big, and he was able to do that. Ninety four pitches as well. That's a great sign. Someone that started off the season in high single A and was going to slowly get ramped up. And then now here we are, and he's able to go almost 100 through six. That's awesome. So really just an all-around solid outing. I, I liked the shape of everything. The pitch mix was pretty fine. Again, get, you know, gave up some hard contact, and the whiffs weren't there. Uh, but pounded. The strike zone did walk too, but for the most part kept the ball in the zone. And, uh, and was able to hit into a defense that in the last week I've been a lot more impressed with. And I think when you have that trust in your defense, you're able to maybe pitch to contact to be a little bit more efficient. So good sign by the defense and a good sign from Fiedo. The bullpen just imploded on Saturday. Uh, Jacob Barnes continues to be kind of like an all or nothing. His ERA is now up to 5-5-1. He either goes out there and will give you three outs and you won't even realize that he pitched because it'll go by so quickly, or he'll go out there and just get absolutely pumped off rip. And I think the scouting report is swing early because he wants to get ahead in the count uh, because this is like four outings in the last two weeks, three weeks, two weeks that like some of the first pitches he's thrown out of the pen just get D deposited somewhere and he did have walks in this one too which did not help anything uh but just just frustrating didn't really have any command in this one through the four seam and the cutter exactly the same We're, we don't need to spend too much more time on jacob barnes and and uh it, he, i think he only gave up one or two balls that were like actually like pretty hard hit but the, the one hit was ridiculous, and then the walks, and whatever. Jacob Barnes, we, we need to not give up three runs in, in one-third of an inning. That's really what it comes down to. So that'll not help the ERA whatsoever. Jason Foley, also the stuff went kind of – the sinker went back to kind of air territory for me. He threw one slider in the outing, and I thought it was really good, and that was like the only time he threw it. So I was like, okay, I guess never mind then. Um, but he just only threw the sinker the entire outing. Uh, that didn't work out too terribly well for him either. Just not, not great. Not great by the bullpen. Drew Carlton is, is Drew Carlton. I don't think we need to spend too much time on him either. Then we get to Sunday and Monday. Sunday, phenomenal pitching performance by several Tigers. Uh, Elvin looked fantastic. Fantastic. The slider was working really well. Four Ks in four innings, two hits, no walks, 53 pitches through four innings as well. 
And then he gets removed from the game because, of course, he does, because that's the story of the season. And it's so awesome. And everyone's super excited about it. Woohoo. Just can we stop? Can we stop getting hurt? Robbie Grossman goes to the IL as well. We'll talk about that in segment three. I'm just, I'm so tired of everyone getting hurt. And, and it's like, it's crazy stuff. Elvin didn't drink enough water. Matt Manning was dehydrated in one of his rehab starts. Then he was actually hurt. Like, can we, can we just catch a break? Robbie Grossman has neck spasms so bad he can't turn his head. Where, when did that happen? Where is this coming from? It just doesn't stop. Uh, but Elvin was really good before getting taken out. Willie Peralta continues to be phenomenal. ERA is now sub 0.9. Below 0.9. He's unbelievable. Alex Lang, the nastiest dude on the planet. Top two in baseball and whiff percentage. That's the dog. He goes one in the third, two strikeouts. Andrew Chafin comes in. He gives up the one run, but does strand the runner as well. Gets two outs. Only nine pitches. Pretty efficient. Andrew Chafin's, he's nasty, man. He really is nasty. So glad to see him get out of it. Obviously, it, it got us a win. We only won by a run. Michael Fulmer comes in he does get the walk but the velocity is the big story in this one it was solid and that's a few outings back in a row now where the velocity has been good and has been not worrisome I guess you can even just say you know we've had a a roller coaster of of a career with Michael Fulmer and to be able to to see him again, even a couple of weeks ago, dipped below in velocity, and we were like, "Oh, brother, here we maybe go again." And he put all of that to rest. Hopefully, fastball sat mid nineties, slider got up to to ninety two, hung low nineties the entire outing, uh, change up even what was high eighties, almost ninety. So really, really solid outing by Michael Fulmer. It's a clean one. ERA down to three oh six. And then Gregory Soto with the save. He, uh, I thought he looked really good in the Cleveland series, and I thought he really looked really good against Minnesota. Uh, I thought the, I think that the last week of Gregory Soto has been a lot better, and he still has the occasional pitch or two that just go in a different zip code. But as a whole, I've thought that it's been a lot more effectively wild than wild. You know what I mean? And, and that was highlighted again, like I said, by Monday's performance. The one hit doesn't bother me at all. And besides that, it was a, it was a really clean and pretty uncompetitive inning. He was in the driver's seat the whole time. Michael Fulmer. We already talked about Michael Fulmer, didn't we? Um, so Gregory Soto's ERA is what I two one six now. Alex Lang also pitched in this one on Monday, one three seven ERA. I know he did give up. The one run, but it wasn't earned, so his ERA still goes down. He did give up two hits. Whatever. His stuff is still so unbelievably nasty. He is the most fun pitcher to watch. Second most. I think it's pretty safe to say Tarek School was the most fun pitcher to watch at the Major League level right now, but I think Alex Lang is right there behind him. I, I think Gregory Soto is still up there, but I know people have you know, just turned against him this season. Um, Joe Jimenez has been phenomenal as well. Really, I just want to go through the whole bullpen because this bullpen is lethal. It's actually really good, and that's awesome. And it's something that we haven't had in a long time, and it is something that I think everyone in there, Fetter and all the pitchers, deserve a ton of credit for. This is a – we have a solid bullpen. Soto, Fulmer, Chafin, Lang, Joe Jimenez – Almost at, his ERA is at three even. He's a scoreless outing away from a sub three ERA. Has been really good. Barnes, like I said, I know the last three, well, not in a row the last three or four outings, but he, in the last two weeks, he's had a couple of really bad outings. He started off really hot. That cutter can be pretty effective at times. Like it's just, it's awesome. It's awesome to have a good bullpen. Uh, Bo Brisky started this game. I thought the fastball command was really brutal in the first three innings. I want to say three. I wrote it down somewhere here. Yeah, the first three innings. Yes, the first three innings, I thought the fastball command was really, really uh, not great. It was kind of either right down the middle or a foot out of the strike zone anytime he went to a heater. And then he gave up the two runs in the fourth. And then after that, 
I, I, I thought it was solid. And he did make the one mistake to end his outing, which you never want to do. That's super frustrating. I feel bad for the kid who's also a swing away from a quality start. That, that pitch, that home run ruined a quality start. Uh, ball flying all over the yard today in Comerica, uh, Monday, yesterday, as you're listening to the, listening to this. Um, but just as a whole, I, I, I was still – nothing really changed for me on my opinion of Bo Brisky in this outing. I think what the most – what this is going to come down to is can he get more swings and misses? And the change up in this one got quite a few whiffs. He had eight total on the game uh, and four of them were on the changeup. That's a great sign. Great sign. We need a swing and miss pitch. I don't care which one it is, but we need a swing and miss pitch. So really liked what I saw from Brisky in this one as well. Um, I think that's everyone, right? I'll, yeah, that's all the pitching total. So we're going to go into segment three here, talk about the Cody Clemens uh, call up and all the other stuff surrounding the org really quick, quick third segment, because I talked a lot in the first two. But we'll get to that right after this. All right, everybody. We are back for our third and final segment here at Locked On Tigers. Thanks for making us your first listen every day, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Okay. So really quickly, this isn't going to be a super long segment because uh, we're already over time and I'm just now starting segment three, which is not okay. Someone's going to get mad at me. But Cody Clemens gets called up. It's at the expense of Robbie Grossman getting hurt. I'm tired of people getting hurt. It's really frustrating. But we get to see Cody Clemens. People have been asking for it for a long time. Uh, I am honored that I, I got to sit down and do an interview with him. <laughs> uh, what is that? A couple of weeks ago now, last Friday, two, two Fridays ago. So, uh, super cool to see, you know, someone I just interviewed then get called up. That's always fun. Uh, great interview, by the way, go check it out on this channel, but it's, it's just awesome because he's been tearing the cover off the ball in AAA. He's been hitting really, really well. And he's hitting the ball hard. He's hitting the ball consistently. It's been a really nice season down there for Cody and AAA. And this is obviously, no surprise to anybody, the offense has been really brutal. Really brutal to start off this season for the Detroit Tigers. And he has played some corner outfield. He's played some third. He's played some second. And he's played some first. All in his professional career, his college career, but more importantly, all this season, he has played first, second, third corner outfield. So, got some versatility. Can We'll probably see him play a few different positions. Robbie is who he is replacing, so I'd imagine he'll get quite a few looks at corner outfield. But don't be surprised if they throw him at first on a torque day off or, or they throw him at second on a scope day off. Scope, he hasn't... hasn't Gotten too many days off this year. Third, I mean, we've seen Candelario get some days off. Don't don't expect him to kind of get mixed around a little bit, and that's great news. The more versatility, the better. All A.J. Hinch teams uh, in his entire managerial history, the good ones have all had great versatility. So uh, not a bad thing there. Just really, really fun. And we have a doubleheader today as you're listening to this on Tuesday, and I think it's safe to say Cody will play in one of them. Managers don't really, you know, don't really like playing somebody two straight games. That's a lot, especially it's going to be really hot uh, for the day game tomorrow. It's supposed to get up to 90. So I, I think that you'll probably see Cody in at least, not, uh, I'd say one. I'd say exactly one of those games. So that'll be super fun. I'm going to the game in uh, the evening, the night game. So hopefully it's the night game, to be honest with you. But regardless, it'll be super cool. Congrats to him. Congrats to his family. That's awesome. Uh, the other big news, Riley Green, already done in single A. He has been called up to triple A. Uh, he was on technically this whole time. He's been on the Mud Hens injured list because that saves us a 40-man roster spot. And uh, it, it makes this part easier. It, it makes it so that he could have a rehab for his rehab. Does that make sense? Like uh, he, he could start off in single A and then get called up to triple a 
You're right. His rehab stint was two games with West Michigan, three at, at most. Uh, it was just the weekend pretty much. And, uh, and then they said, okay, rehab over. You're back up to the club that you're originally at, which is Toledo. And now he can get a couple of maybe a week or two work week or twos. What am I even trying to say? He can get a week or two's worth of at bats. I guess that works for Toledo. And then after that, it's showtime, baby. It's showtime. Austin Meadows also beginning to do baseball activities. Uh, some Hopefully some in-game play here soon. It sounds like the, everybody seems way more optimistic about Austin Meadows now than they were like a week ago. The week ago, everybody was like, oh my goodness, Vertigo could last the rest of his life. This is horrifying. Uh, it's it, it, Everybody seems a lot more kind of calmed down and a lot more optimistic about it in the last five or six days. So that's good news, I think. We got some people starting to come back, hopefully. Hopefully. We still ha are a long ways away in the pitching department, but if we can at least get a consistent offense going... Let's 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 win, man. Let's just keep winning ball games. Four of our last five, uh, nine of our last fourteen. I want to say, but Let, let's let's keep winning. Let's keep winning. Let's go take two tomorrow. Get right back in this thing. All right. Thanks for making Lockdown Tigers your first listen every day. Make your next listen Lockdown MLB. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and his unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast on Locked on MLB on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, that's that's all I got for you. Went really long. I apologize. I just hit my mic. I apologize for that. But uh, after missing a show yesterday and already being a weekend recap, had a lot to go over, a lot to discuss. So right back at it tomorrow. Two games we'll be recapping tomorrow. I'll be at the nightcap. So if you're there, always say hi as uh, as usual. And yeah, I think that's all I got. If my if I sound tired, long weekend as I know a, a lot of us did. So hopefully get a uh, get a good night's sleep and get get back on the horse named Friday tomorrow. All right, peace and love. Going to therapy's dope. I'll catch you all then, baby. Go Tigers.